After the first image of a black hole was released, the immediate question that we all got was, what's next? And we were also asking ourselves that question, like, what do we do for an encore? And the answer is, you want to start to see if you can make movies. Can we capture the dynamics of the gas orbiting the black hole? The lensing of the light around the black hole is one way to test Einstein's theory. But looking at the motion of matter as it orbits the black hole, that's an entirely new dimension of the problem. We can do this by adding roughly double the number of telescopes around the globe to the Event Horizon Telescope Array. And that will allow us to capture the first motion pictures of black holes. That's really the kernel of the next generation EHT project. There are a lot of challenges as we think about the next generation Event Horizon Telescope. There are technical challenges. Can we advance the instrumentation so that it can digest four times the amount of data that we're currently recording? Can we get permission from different countries to put new telescopes in high altitude, very remote sites? Can we keep the collaboration together? Right? Everybody is busy doing different things. You know, can we recreate the vibe of the Event Horizon Telescope again? It was a singular special moment. Can we get everybody behind this project? And we, can we convince the funding agencies and the governments to allow us to do this? Ultimately, can we create the algorithms? Can we write the code that's going to allow us to turn the data that we collect into motion pictures? For the next generation of Event Horizon Telescope, we are having to quadruple uh, the amount of data that's going to come through. Um, that is, that's just, it's a huge amount. It's a mind-boggling amount of data. And so, personally, uh, one of the things that I've been doing is working on the, what's called the digital backend. And so that is a board and code that will be able to process 256 gigabits per data a second. That's a huge amount of data um, being able to come through. And so we have to use, you know, really cutting edge technology, um, things that are not just, you know, easy off the shelf components in order to get that sort of data through. It's really a mixture of all the scientists and all the engineers that we need for the project to succeed. So we have digital engineers working on how to record at very, very high speeds data at each of our telescopes around the globe. We have analog electronics experts that are taking the signals in, in radio format. One of the things that we're working on, which is incredibly important for the next generation Event Horizon Telescope, is that you know, we're going to be not only quadrupling the data, but doubling the amount of telescopes that are going to be taking data. Um, what we'd really like to see is more real time of transferring the data rather than doing it the way that we do it now, which is you have to go physically get it. Um, we are going to hopefully take more advantage of uh, satellite transfer systems where we can transfer the data and we can have it more instantaneously. Um, you know, one of the problems in the past was the South Pole takes six to nine months to get data out of the South Pole because you have to go in at the right time. Um, if we could transfer that data off, um, then the scientists could get the data a lot more quickly and we could get our results a lot more quickly. Black holes are the most mysterious objects in the universe. Everything else is secondary. Everything else we kind of understand. But black holes are the one object that symbolizes everything we don't know about modern physics. So the Event Horizon Telescope gave us the first image of a black hole. And that was huge, because that allowed us to test Einstein's theory in the one place in the universe where it might break down the edge of the black hole. The size of that ring was itself a test of Einstein's theory. But to take it further, we also want to measure other parameters of the black hole. How fast are they spinning? That has everything to do to the evolution of a central black hole in the middle of a galaxy and the galaxy itself. Why do galaxies look the way they do? Spin is the answer. And we can get at that spin by looking at the motion of matter around the black hole. This is why we need the NGHD to give us the first movies.